Man, homie. Man, homie. Sway in the morning, Shade 4 5, man. I like the theme of the day show, man. We got a lot of, we giving a lot of um opportunities and a lot of fresh talent that's been on the show so far. Now we got another fresh talent that made it to the show. Have the beat, got the project, the jungle is the only way out. Uh, good friend of mine, you know him, goes by the name of Adrian Miller, who is known to fine artists and build careers. And, you know, he's a hit maker. Adrian Miller's here, ladies and gentlemen. Hey. Gotta get Adrian Miller. <laughs> And he had been talking to me about this artist um, mm -hmm. that he that he uh, came in contact with. And for a while now, has been talking to me about, hey, man, you got to bring this young lady on the show. She's extremely talented. And I started doing my research on her and found out that she's not new to the game. Right. Right. She's has, she got a deep rooted history. True. Um, one of the things I admire about her is she studied at Spelman. Is this correct? This is correct. She went to Spelman University. I ain't mad at that. Hey. Okay, you went to college. I did go to college. Was yes. that was that important to your family or very? That was parents are both teachers, so oh yeah, she yeah. was gone. It she was, was <laughs> yeah. Okay, um, that that's cool. Then after that, she got her first um record deal. With, ish ish with Def Jam. Oh no or, no no. What no, no, was no, it? No. It was an independent, like, production situation. Okay, production, yeah. singer, songwriter, MC type of thing, right? Yeah. She's here on the show today. Give it up for Mariba, ladies and gentlemen. Mariba! Thank you for having me. Okay, so, shit. So, uh, so what did you grow up? So, I was born in Montgomery, Alabama. Okay. Um, and my family moved around growing up, so... Philly, Greensboro, North Carolina, um, Atlanta, okay, Ethiopia. I lived there for a little bit. My dad's from there. So that's your descent. Uh, my, yeah, on my father's side. Have you been there? Yeah. How, you said you lived there, lived there mm -hmm. for, for how long? Seven months. Oh. <laughs> my dad sent me there on some like disciplinary shit, and then I just loved it and stayed. So you were bad. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, bad's relative. Okay, right. relative. In your, his opinion, your but not your opinion. opinion. In my opinion, he, I'm a dad. If, you, if a dad sends his daughter to a, another country, <laughs> 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 that don't normally have what you do. What made him? What was the straw that broke the camel's back? I dropped back? out of school and I was just like, I'm moving to New York. I'm going to be a singer. And he was like, what? And then he just was like, you need to go see what what things are like somewhere else and humble yourself and get in touch with your roots so you can see the opportunities that we've given you. You know what I mean? And and I fell in love with it and the culture there. And yeah, and then I just ended up staying there. And then he was like, come back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, <laughs> that happens too. We get, we get weak and soft after a while. See? But what did you learn that you love so much? Community, um, a connection to to my blackness, a context. Mm -hmm for mm -hmm. my you know what i mean like a wider context for for myself and for the people i'm hoping to inspire mm -hmm. how yeah. did how did that experience um inform the music you started making when you came back before that i was making like folk songs i played acoustic guitar and i would just make like these really ambient folk songs and my family there was like basically we can't get jiggy to this shit basically okay. translation okay. they were yeah. like yeah. we need drums we yeah. need like we movement. need movement we're uh -huh. african you know what i mean uh -huh. and i was living in greensboro north carolina like making some folk shit and they were just like where's your context you know what i mean we mm -hmm. want to we want to be able to connect with you so when i came back i started producing taught myself how to make beats and i was like i gotta they gotta get jiggy with my shit yeah so. and now they're getting jiggy with your shit <laughs> yeah okay uh what did you learn to make beats on ableton ableton mm -hmm. okay and then when you would walk into sessions with your own beats how did people respond to that sometimes it was dope uh -huh. um a lot of my experiences at first were men telling me that i should stick to the other stuff uh -huh. and um Subsequently, I stopped working with a lot of people and just stopped being around a lot of people because I realized it was like a control thing. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, and the more that I started realizing my own power and what I could do on my own, the more other people vanished mm -hmm. that were around me um, creatively. But then I started finding people who were cool with the idea of, of like a woman and a black woman doing her own shit and being a part of it. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. being a, a piece of it instead of coming up with a vision themselves, and that was that's where I'm at now. That's mm. what's up, round of applause for that. I like the way that sounds. Yeah. Were those people uh, Spillage Village, or? They've, yeah, they've always been supportive they've always of me been? doing my thing, yeah. Tell people who they are. 
um, Earth Gang, mm-hmm. JID, Jid, mm-hmm. um, Jordan Bryant, Hollywood JB. Uh, it's a collective out of Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Uh, Black, Black and I are honorary members. And yeah, we all met when we were just like in the indie scene in Atlanta. All kind of were on the same different wave from what was going on. And we linked up. First, I met Earth Gang. We did a show when I was still at Spelman. They went to Hampton. They came down, and we were like, I was like, hmm, y'all are dope. Like, you're dope, too. They're like, we have this song. Maybe you could get on it. Got on that. Um, and, yeah, like, the rest is history. The they introduced history. me to Jid. Mm-hmm. Jid and I are, like, long-lost siblings. We started making stuff together. Every time we link up, we make, like, some R&B, like, Tammy and Marvin mm-hmm. type vibes. Oh shit! Yeah. Oh, I need. Yep. You need me background vocals. I got you. Let me know. <laughs> you know what? I'm a part of Earth Gang. They'll tell you. Come on, man. <laughs> Black been up here. Come on. We Come we all family. I'm trying to get we it from you. you. Though. We but got you. you. But you you gotta really. Uh, when I'm looking at all these labels and and people that you dealt with, um, you know, um, can you talk to that? Like, how? What were you going through? Like, I didn't really deal with that much. Okay. I, yeah. I, I, you know, I feel like a lot of artists, when you got a lot of passion and excitement, mm-hmm. like when you're young and you don't know that much about anything as far as business wise, like there was a time when I was just like, oh, dang, so, so-and-so thinks I'm dope. Let me just try to do something with them and do something like that. I didn't really know my power and know like where it could lead to, you know what I mean? So when I was in Atlanta, I just, I just was open and naive, you know what I mean? But you just really have to protect your magic and protect your light because a lot of times people don't necessarily know what to do with it. They just know that they don't want someone else to figure out what to do with it before them. Uh-huh. So they'll like keep you even if they don't know what to do, you know? Mm. Um, and that's not just in business. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I learned that that's in a lot of areas mm-hmm. of life. Yeah. Yeah, relationships to, for yeah, sure for sure for sure for sure yeah. yeah you was about to go into that then you pivoted you said yeah, that's not just like, into business i learned that that's and then a you bigger went, i saw what you was gonna do with that <laughs> <laughs> it happened in relationships too huh because it must have because i look at some of the songs you write about yeah you know everything even uh because you do um uh, i don't know if you call it spoken word but mm-hmm. you do poetry as well as sing and um even listening to the dodge and the devil mm-hmm. piece that you uh put on on this project uh and you got to get the project the jungle is the only way out you got a lot of interesting eclectic sounds that mm-hmm. are all fusing together to give you something that is unfamiliar um mm-hmm. uh, uh, but fre- refreshing you know you. the piece you did called "Dodging the Devil." You know yeah. what? Pull that up real quick. I was like, "Should I do it?" Yeah, no, you, okay. You want to do oh, it? Oh, you can do it live. Can you do it? Yeah. Let's do it. Let's do it live. <laughs> she said, "Okay," wow. without you even she asking. Volunteered. <laughs> <laughs> okay, she volunteered. You right, stuck you dodging the okay. devil. Okay, the right. okay, you go. She's gonna do it. You're gonna. Do I'm it, gonna though. do it. Okay. Damn. You stuck dodging the devil. The older you get, youth grants grace, growth grants grit. But with that grit comes its known opposition, like addictions, evictions, convictions, lost visions, love riddled with truths, hidden world tripping. Shit just glitching, man. Here come the devil. Talking to you with a smile and a shovel, ready to bury you and your little hustle and give you some bills and a brand new muzzle. The piece of peace that you're perfect would release into the world would be a poison to the devil. So every chance is taken to take your light and sell it back to the sky. And for twice as high. You're wise now, though, know it. Don't plant a seed in your mind if you do not wish to grow it. You're a fast motion kept in focus. Cash calls some people worthless, but what's Chester Hocus Pocus? Pale folks, Papa's deem what work is. Broken people ain't always the brokest. As for the devil, show it. No ruler can rule you. No ruler can size you but the one that never binds you. Realize, too, all that will try you is designed to unwind you, define you, but you do get to decide if it's tied will capsize you. See, the devil's been lied to. The devil could die, too. Mm, wow, I like girl. that Mariba, ladies and gentlemen. Mm, that's my new Instagram caption. Yeah, that's that. yeah. <laughs> Give out your social real quick. M-E-R-E-B-A. Okay, we're going to talk about the meaning behind your name. I'm going to play this song right here called Heat Wave featuring Black Sway in the Morning. Mariba is here, Shade 4 5. Thank you. Mm. Oh, like thank that. You. <laughs> Heather's applauding. She, it's dope. I haven't heard that in a while. Well, because it, it, it take a while. 
yeah. I mean, to find it's a lot of. It's a lot of music out. Like, really, yeah. let's be honest. Like, I don't even feel bad anymore when I haven't heard of someone because mm-hmm. it's so much. And a lot of times things just sound alike or you're not that interested. And if I just walked into this room and this was playing, I would say, who is this? Yeah. You know, um, in a good way. And then if people were blessed enough to hear you, would you just spit a cappella? I mean, it was crazy. So mm-hmm. I can see, mm-hmm. like, all the work you've been putting in. I understand now why you fought and was like, yo, I'm going in this direction you know i'm gonna I'm stay in africa i'm a school i, I, I want to follow my passion and my purpose mm-hmm. is you can hear it in your music mm, it's you. dope thank it's you dope so much. Thank you. What, what does your name mean Mareba. i uh, see we have we've been killing it and you didn't even correct us <laughs> no 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 it's Mar- cool. Mar- it's Mareba. Cool. well yeah that's okay. how so like when my father came over here he kind of peeped that people couldn't really get that so mariba is how he started expressing it to people in America. Okay. But Mareba, um, it's a blessing. It's like how you greet someone like with a blessing in certain regions in Ethiopia, like when you first see him, Mareba. Mareba. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Okay. But it's my last name. So That's your last name. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, Tracy, you, you know, you, you said you were feeling <laughs> her music. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm interested in going back um, into the relationships. Yeah. Yeah, and the ones that have been um, really piercing in your life that have helped you to craft this music. Can you share about that? Because a lot of times, I mean, humans, but especially as women, since we have our emotions and we need healthy outlets yes, for how to express heartbreak, how to turn a burden into a blessing. Right. How are you able to remix some of the hard relationships you had? Um, methods weren't always healthy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, music was my healthy my healthy method um i've always used music like that like i started writing songs when i was in elementary school i didn't really realize it, but it was like a coping mechanism for me because mm-hmm. i was um I, I always struggled with speaking about my emotions i've always I, like i grew up in a household that was kind of more like don't do that and uh-huh. just figure it out and be strong you know what i mean so um that was my escape and then i grew up and i realized that I'm a hopeless romantic mm. and I'd be falling in love and stuff and <laughs> join the club. <laughs> I'm not. There's a lot of us. He lies. He loves lifestyle. <laughs> um, so that happened and it's like, you know, just growing pains. Like I, a lot of this project is about like a relationship that I was in at one point and, um, and, I guess like I always like I have like a a romanticized idea about love that's not always healthy that probably came from like movies and shit and Mm. like yeah things that I had to unlearn so um you know relationships can get tricky when two people are both ambitious and things aren't going well in their ambitions and you know the stresses of the world end up being taken out on the person that you're that you're with Mm -hmm. and that cycle just started in our relationship and there was definitely a time when I was like it's all his fault for sure (laughs) but then I was like all right that can't really be the case in anything you know what I mean so that sort of reflection is usually where my songs come from is when I'm like being honest with myself in ways that I probably wouldn't with other people because mm-hmm. it's easier to be like, he ain't shit, girl. You know what I mean? Right. He did X, Y, and Z. But when you really start thinking about like you zoom out and you think about like two people in it and what y'all contributed to it, that's usually where my songs come from. Right. Because you have to leave space for your personal growth. If you're mm-hmm. continuously blaming it on someone, then how do you mature? Right. Mm-hmm. And then you're just going to end up in the same thing again with somebody else blaming oh. him for some shit. Shit, y'all should do a weekly book club and stuff. Like, y'all bonding on that right there. So what does that leave now? Where does that leave you now? What's your status now? I'm better now. You're better now? Good. That's good to know. That's Great answer, boy. Ever. I'm better. better now. This one right here, boy. I tell you, man. You dance too? Dance? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, do. yeah I can tell. I do. All right. I got moves. <laughs> yeah, I see them. Your pivot game is incredible. <laughs> DB, go ahead. A boxer. <laughs> Let me ask you because when I was listening to the album, um, I, I and maybe I'm wrong, but it sounded sort of like um, you may have got some influence from like a Fleetwood Mac or Stevie mm-hmm, Nicks, mm-hmm. something like that, with the way you use the guitar and your Casey melodies. And things. Okay, that, then that's what it was. Um, and also, I got the idea because when I listen to music, <clears throat> I usually put a visual next to it, and it sounded like you did the same thing. Mm-hmm. Like you have a, a, an idea of how you wanted the song to look when you have a visual for it. So, mm-hmm. what are some of the influences outside of maybe R and B and like rap that people would be surprised to learn about 
Uh, Tracy Chapman, Bob Dylan, Joni Mitchell, uh, Fleetwood Mac, like you said. Um, <sighs> Nina Simone. Um, just like I've, I've always been really into, I mean, Stevie Wonder, I don't know if that's, if you can't tell that, but that's like. He's just the goat, you know. But I've re- I've always been really into singer songwriters, like people who like I listen to their music and I feel like I know them on a seriously personal level, mm-hmm. you know. Um, ever since I was a kid, like I just there's something about that mystique that I was really into. So a lot of those people, like I used to go and read liner notes and be like, "Who wrote these songs?" And when I would see just like the artist name, I would be like, "Damn." wow, it's really like their life, you know? There was something magical to me about that type of alchemy, like people turning their life into that. So um, all those people. And then as far as the visual piece, yeah, like I like metaphors. It helps me make sense of things in the world. So I look at a lot of my songs as like stories, like mini stories, you know? And then the visual pieces that go along with it are just how my brain kind of, thought of that song usually comes in a visual way like even the title of my project the jungle is the only way out comes from like my dad used to tell me those little proverb type stories Mm -hmm. about Ethiopia you know and those little mantras they just help you like when shit's really not right just remember like okay I remember this little thing like shit's supposed to get ugly Mm -hmm. you know um and I just that's what I'm trying to kind of give to people is these metaphors that are these little tidbits to take with you to remind you like cool like this is supposed to happen and then mm-hmm. i get through it and then it's the next thing because that helped me you know what's what's up i like um, that she said liner notes you like people don't know about reading that, yeah. liner notes <laughs> <laughs> well, she's a singer songwriter you, you have you you ever written for you written songs we would know of for artists that we would know not yet i tried doing that didn't, didn't it didn't connect it didn't connect okay <laughs> I, that's fair enough not yet i hope to do that though to write for other artists yeah. and make that connection. For sure. Uh, I want to thank you for coming by this morning. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Say it correct. Mareba? Mareba. Mareba. There you go. You, you, you Yankees will say Mareba. <laughs> uh, <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> but get her, uh, follow, give out your social one mm-hmm. more time. Citizens, please follow this young lady. You M- go, you'll do yourself a treat. Go ahead. Thank you. M-E-R-E-B-A. Okay. And then we're going to play a song called Planet You. Yes. And what's the meaning behind that? This was when I had fallen in love before all the other stuff happened. Okay. And it's like planet, the letter U, like wherever you come from. I want to go there. Oh, Mm. damn. That's that hopeless romantic Mm -hmm. thing. That part. (laughs) Okay. Okay. I get it. I get it. All right. Good to to have you up here for the first time of many. Can't wait till you get them Grammys and all those awards. Thank you. I receive that. Definitely. And and, and you shout us out when you do. Absolutely. Okay. I receive that back. Okay. 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 Okay.